we're recording, so what do you get when you get a German, a Jew, and a black guy together for a certain topic? It's not the Holocaust, that's for sure. The best interracial porno you will ever have. <laughs> Actually, no, it's called the casting for movie shit. M movie shit was the answer. I realized starting with German and Jew was a good person, <laughs> but then we threw black into the mix. Because once that event goes black, it can't go back on history. There you go. That's why you bring me around. So, well, let's just hop this shit on in. First of all, everyone, introduce yourselves. I'm that guy from Team Nidorf. What I'm are you Willow Red Raven. Okay, you're Willow. You are Marin. You're Aaron. Call me Bull. You're A A Ron. A A Ron, nigga. You're fucked right. up, A A Ron. So, on August 13th, Tom Cruise made a daring rooftop jump during the filming of Mission Impossible 6, home of the famous Henry Cavill mustache gate. Only to break his ankle in two places and force the film's production to be delayed by six whole fucking weeks. Tom Cruise is a troll, should not be jumping anywhere. He's like the 50. The 50 year old leading man has reportedly already gotten a cast and has been ordered to stay off his ankle. But for an ever active guy like Tom, that's easier said than done. According to our insider, the A Lister's doing his best to stay positive as his bones heal. Well, though, your thoughts on Tom Cruise jumping off a roof and breaking his ankle in two spots and holding a movie back by a month and a half? Well, this is something that's not um, unusual for Tom Cruise, doing most of his own stunts. I know he has broken um, nearly every bone in his body, I heard him say in an older interview. So you're saying the man has broken every bone in his body, and this doesn't surprise you? Nearly, but yes. Alright. So... Yeah, Tom Cruise does his own stunts. Eventually, this was gonna bite him in the ass. Okay. And this time, it bit him in the ankle. In the ankle. ankle. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's be flat about it. Let's be honest. Pun tackler, let's be honest. Um, he's like what, five foot ten? Yeah, he's shorter than. He's fucking short. He's shorter than us. I think he's like, like five ten. I think he's like five. He's gotta be short. Re regardless, he, but, he didn't get get to your height point. Right? I mean, yeah, he, 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 he like he's he's just he's small. He's uh, he doesn't quite have the frame or the fitness that he used to have as a younger than really old younger older Mission Impossible's or Mission Impossible Six. Six. He's 50 years old. I mean, dude, the Family Guy, was it Family Guy or was it, I think it was American Dad or Family Guy, is making fun of you. You're a goddamn troll doll that gets popped up in a box. I'm a, I'm a change I mean, life. at this point, like, I get it, you're 50 and you want to do your own stunts, but maybe just bite the bullet and use a stunt double. Although, we'll, 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 actually, let's just transition to the story of stunt people because it is sad, but it is a story we need to talk about. Uh, tragic news coming from the filming of Deadpool 2. Early Monday morning, a stunt person identified as Joey S.J. Harris was killed on set after a trick involving a motorcycle went wrong. Deadline reports that she was the first African-American female professional road racer and that Deadpool 2 was her first movie working as a stunt performer. Reports state that before the accident, she had successfully pulled off the stunt five times and practiced all day on Saturday, but on the final take, the accident occurred. Show. Star Ryan Reynolds took to social media yesterday, or I guess, yeah, I guess yesterday, two days, whatever, to share his thoughts on the tragedy. He said, Today we are tragically lost a member of a crew while filming Deadpool. We're heartbroken, shocked, and devastated, but recognize nothing can come close to the grief and any close to the pain or family loved ones feel. This moment, my heart pours out to them along with each and every person. And allegedly, after this, Deadpool 2 was put on some form of hiatus, probably because, like, yo, y'all just watched a woman die. You, you, you need some break. Okay. On that whole, let's put a pause on production. Deadpool, honestly, from just from my experience with me and my fellow coworkers and friends, we are chomping at the bit, or it's fun to, for this movie to come out. We're really excited about this. Yeah, it's sad, it sucks that a stunt actor dies, but how many times do people die on movie sets that we never hear about? I mean, honestly, it's, okay, fantastic. Finally, a one of the first female African-American stunt doubles, stunt riders. Sorry, let me correct myself. That's fantastic. Well, first American professional road, road race. Racer. Whatever the fuck. The, the Danica Patricks of us black people, all right? Whatever. It's fantastic. It's a beautiful thing. Not important enough to stop a how many million dollar production? Uh, 
a probably eighty, ninety million dollar production. Yeah, one stooge is not enough to stop that kind of production. I know it sounds cold, I know it sounds icy, but she's a stunt double. Just not that important. There's a hundred more of you. And God forbid, worst comes to worst, stick Ryan Reynolds in blackface and roll it. All right, uh, Willow, your thoughts on uh, um <laughs> lady unfortunately dying. <laughs> Is that it is well one thing he did say, yes, this is the second death within two months of um stunt performers. Yes, with the whole walking dead thing, correct? Mm-hmm. The walking dead. Uh the same sort of thing happened on the set of the walking dead. They were doing a stunt and the stunt person died, so that also got reported. Right, I was in the bus but I was like I didn't catch that one, but yeah. that's that's sad too. Who the fuck cares? They're stunt doubles. They it's know stunt people do the job the actors are supposed to do. Look, they they know what they sign up for. Uh, yeah, it's that's in their true. fucking contract. Like, they have life insurance policies because of it. There are families taken care of. It sucks. Put the bitch in the ground. Let's keep rolling. Yeah. I mean, personally, yeah, it's terrible that it happened, and I do understand maybe some like time away from the film going, yo, we just watched a person die in front of us. Okay, I forgot they are Hollywood. We, we need to take a breather for a minute. We, we need to steady, settle any possible lawsuit the family might try to put against us, even though it's probably in her contract. Yeah. Like, but so, not an indefinite hiatus. Because we've movie. all even gone on, like, say, a go-kart or something. And it's like, beyond this point, are you sign this going, you know, if you hurt yourself or die, you can't sue us. Yeah, it's, it's in the contract for go-karts or fucking amusement parks when you get the membership. It's what it is. So, it, it's still bad that it happened, but I'm pretty sure production will pick up soon, and they'll probably have some nice giant credit thing going for Joey Harris or whatever. Oh, what, like Fast and Furious did for... Uh, Paul Walker, or uh, yeah. what uh, Star Trek Beyond did for Anton Yelchin. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Oh, his death admittedly was kind of sad, just getting a little off topic. What horrible pop song are they going to make for the first African-American female road racer? Uh, you see, I don't think Deadpool would do that. I don't know. They might make a song with his fucking unicorn singing. I mean, if they if they do it in Deadpool style, I have no problem with it. Absolutely. But I think they're not going to be able to put, like, they'll put a small, like, in memory of so-and-so. I don't quite know her name. What's her name again? Uh, Joey S.J. Harris. Joy? Joey. Oh, okay. Well, Joy, 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 Joey, J-O-I. J-O-I. Let's just call it S.J. Yeah. Because it's equal to S.J. That's a, okay, for poor SJ, yeah, it's sad for SJ's family. It really sucks. But the best they're going to get out of this is a uh, memoriam, we're sorry, a massive life insurance policy payout, if they were smart. And, uh, I don't know, probably a contract compensation. On the off chance, usually it's written in contracts with yeah. doubles. I know that my riders, for my work, I mean, our business is nowhere near millions of dollars like this. But they have a substantial compensation pro uh, package for injury, death. Yeah, and expected injury or death clauses. Yeah, compensation for the family. So in all honesty, yeah, it sucks, but it's just not it enough. happens, and as we all know, accidents can happen. Even with uh, the voiceover actor who did like all the promos for The Walking Dead, like you know, he was an experienced like you know skydiver and base jumper, and just happened to him and his buddy happened to pull their shoots in the wind. Nature went. And then their bodies went in the air. Wait, so they weren't even on set? Oh, no, no, this is a different guy. I know, but I'm talking about the other, the Walking Dead thing. They weren't even on set? No, no, Walking, the Walking Dead guy, the Walking Dead stunt actor was on set when he died. Okay, I thought you, I thought you were... Okay, no, I was saying that. the voiceover, the guy who did, like, next week on The Walking Dead. Oh, okay, I thought yeah. you were talking about the actual, the stunt no. double that was on, like, I'm like, if he wasn't even on set, why the fuck do we care? They're just like, yeah, uh, he's an experienced skydiver, and then nature just went... Yeah, no, wind's gonna push you towards your buddy that way, and you're gonna smack into each other, and one of you's gonna die, another one's gonna break a whole bunch of bones. Let's bring our heads together and fake out this drop situation. <laughs> All I have to say, <laughs> even though that one's also sad, why the fuck are both of you jumping out of a perfectly good aeroplane? Uh, but <laughs> planes are bullshit. Thanks for your feelings, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sucks. All Besides the great. fact that planes are bullshit, I know gravity works. I've seen evidence my entire life. <laughs> you know gravity works. And a steel cylinder flying through the sky is bullshit. And I just, just took came a, out of it. And yeah, this cylinder. is some, someone who just came, who literally has flown for the past 26 hours. Then to drive another thing. Yeah, I, I, and I still say planes are bullshit. And I was freaking out the whole time. 
So, no, why are you jumping out of one? I don't know. But SJ, what, what, what did she die doing, anyway? Uh, a stunt involving a motorcycle. So they're just not giving you any kind of, like, did you splatter on the ground? I, I think you're looking for the gruesome detail. I'm looking for what the fuck actually happened. Oh, she had a motorcycle accident. Okay, that could have, she had some badass road burn and burned off half her face. That could have been, she decided to take a jump, one of the jumps, took a little too sharp, and face planted and scorpion herself to death. I don't know, what, what actually did she do? And the, the, the whole, that's the one thing that I don't like about these reports and why I don't have as much sympathy or apathy. Uh, I have a more apathy and less sympathy for these kind of situations is because if they just give you this little half-assed explanation of what happened and explain well. some rip fucking SJ thing on Twitter. And Willow, you were trying to say with your well. <laughs> well, out of respect for the family, they're not going to release any of that. Yeah. Willow does bring up a good point for out of respect for the family. They're probably not going to release that information, especially if it is like a bad injury, as you know, most auto most vehicles. motorcycle accidents are. <laughs> yeah, it's generally like. <sighs> but I mean, is it, if it's just like a flat? Oh, motorcycle. Okay, motorcycle accident. Okay, that could that, that. There's so many things it could have been. Yeah. And there's so many possibilities of it. And it just went to show it was an accident because she did it all day Saturday, did it five times before that, and it just happened to be the one time where something went wrong. Well, take it from an athlete's perspective, which motorcyclers are, most sports yeah. racers are athletes. From an athlete's perspective, you can practice as much as you want to, you can keep on pushing and pushing and pushing to make yourself better at it, make yourself better at it. Well, I mean, they were like, like, use the, use the play thing, it'd be like, we ran the play, on the practice field, five times, nothing went wrong. Then on the game, it's on game all, day. It's the then the day before, like during warm up and all that, and even like probably say, let's just say, even preseason, mm -hmm. we did it right. And then first actual game, oh, it's just, fucked up. Yeah, it's just one of those things that and the thing of it is, if you keep on practicing too hard, you end up psyching yourself out. And that's it, from someone who rides so, dirt bikes. It's 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 tough. It is sad, but we do need to move on through a different story. So, on a slightly lighter note, uh, Hollywood Reporter reports that late Friday, Holly, the Hollywood Reporter late Friday announced the slate of releases for Sony's upcoming line of movies. First up, there's Spider-Man's Shared Universe, which will start with Venom next October. Now has a date for its other spin-off, uh, Silver Sable and Black Cat movies, or Silver Sable Black Cat, like, movie. Yeah. Uh, the film will now open on February 8th, 2019, four months after Venom. Sony also confirmed that Anne Hathaway will star in Barbie, moving the film back a few weeks to oh, August 8th, 2018. God. We already knew about the Anne Hathaway thing. I didn't. In addition, Sony and Black Label Media Sicario 2 Salado, oh. the follow-up to Dennis Villeneuve's 2015 film, will Ooh. open... June 29th, 2018, and the noted absent movie is the upcoming Bad Boys sequel, Bad Boys for Life. No, they're not making another one of those. Well, obviously, because it's not on the slated release, so well, since you spoke up, your thoughts on okay. these sets of movies. I'm really excited for Silver and Black. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm really, that's really going to be fantastic. Venom, I don't... R-rated Venom with Tom Hardy. It's going to be an R-rated movie. Yes. Okay, see that's th see this is one of the things that I've been having about these about these Marvel and Sony and all these in DC all these superhero movies is that some of them like Deadpool. Thank God they did Deadpool and R because the PG thirteen would have burned the theater down. Um, <laughs> they had it in R rated. Can't say that that close after a riot where people burn shit down. Are you kidding me? It was a KKK riot. Are you fucking kidding me? White supremacists they're known for burning shit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <What a> surprise. <laughs> But anyway. <laughs> anyway, so burning down the movie theater if the movie's not rated R. Venom is a gr gruesome character. Almost as gruesome, not as gruesome as Carnage, but Venom himself, the symbiote, oh. is a gruesome character. But Venom is one of those characters who can be toned back to PG-13 because... It can be toned back if we want Tobey Maguire fucking... Well, no, even just in comics or general, or even just look at the 2000s animated show we grew up with, like, yeah, you can do Venom and Carnage because they stuck in the, lower ratings, they just, stuck you Deadpool take Deadpool. the blood away, and all of a sudden, you can get away with a lot of stuff in Hollywood. 
Yeah, it's, it's... A lot of Hollywood ratings go, okay, like, I get you just stuck your arm through someone, but you can't, like, show all the guts and shit on the other side. Like, clean that shit up. <laughs> yeah, clean that shit up. Let's not it forget just, the just... initial cut of 2012's Avengers, you know, highest grossing superhero film of all time. Uh... What got an initial R rating for the Loki stabbing Coulson through the chest scene? Because I guess they showed a little too much blood or gore or whatever. Oh, like how he pulled the, the chair out that was fucking clean. That's bullshit. <laughs> His spear, like, had blood on it, but it's probably not nearly as much as they initially yeah, I'm put sorry, on there. Yeah, copper tone red. I'm, I'm, I apologize. Uh, on a copper fucking looking spear. Let's, let's be honest. It was, it, I don't know, for Venom, it requires, I feel like it requires that R rating because it needs that edgy section to it. Especially if they are going to, because, like, who do you get to be Venom's antagonist? You kind of need Carnage initially. Yes, you do need Carnage. You have to have Carnage, and Carnage is a brutal fucking character. Oh, yeah, because he's Venom, but even more psychotic, and then gets merged with a, a psychopathic serial killer. serial killer. A freaking serial killer. But please, Willow, what, what do you think on What do you think on the Spider Verse, and then we'll go through from there? Oh. If you have any questions, I can answer them. <laughs> I, I think we cleared everything up. Um... Yeah, but our rating's a requirement. Um, Silver and Black, I do not know anything about, though. Uh, you do not know anything about Silver, Sable, and Black Cat? Nope. Okay, so yeah. Silver, Sable, and Black Cat are... Well, Black Cat's one of Peter Parker's more complicated girlfriends. He's boning the shit out of his uh, arch nemesis. Because it okay. falls under that sort of Catwoman territory, and they were trying to set her up in Andrew Garfield's Amazing Spider-Man 2, like... You know, hey, here's Felicia, and she has like a cat bell, and like you know, she's. But Andrew Garfield yeah. looks like he's 16, so you know. Uh, that's not why that movie failed. It was just. It was a really and, shitty movie. Yeah, they were trying to go. Let's cram, let's make Sinister Six, and then have Rhino at the beginning, and then have him inexplicably show up at the end. Uh, let's rush Green Goblin. Yeah. Was... Uh, let's have Electro be our main villain, and then look at all this other shit. It was. It was. It was, it was so much. It was. It was DC's BB suit. Yeah, was, was, I'm sorry, Marvel's BB suit. Or Suicide Sony's. Squad. Marvel's Suicide Squad. It's was. Sony's Suicide Squad. I'm sorry. Sony's. Uh, there oh, there yeah. is a difference. I'm, I know. I made. I'm, I'm, I actually. I, I will admit my Just mistake. because they're buddy buddy now, which is the little amendum for those who don't know, the Spider Verse is kind of like the Netflix verse where they can reference Spider Man and the Avengers and anything that happens, but anything that happens in their most likely won't get referenced in the MCU as a whole. Yeah. Like, they might have Tom Holland swing by because, you know, he is a character still owned by Sony. It's just, you know, Marvel's like the thing about Like, Tiger Woods has Nike tattooed on his ass. Tom Holland has Sony tattooed on his fucking forehead. All right, it's... Um... But it's fun... Actually, the, the thing that... The big thing that sticks out here, though, is they're releasing the Silver Sable Black Cat film only four months after the Venom movie. Which is a little bit, feels like a little bit rushed. I don't know about because you're really banking on your Venom movie generating crushing. some hype. Are yeah, some I did hype? think that was awfully close together. Yeah, because I mean, there is the thing of like, I get like maybe the stories are a little closer intertwined than we think. Much like, um, well, yeah, because I think what is the... it? A s- home, Spider-Man: Homecoming two, whatever they're going to call it, is Homecoming. only like two or three months after Avengers 4. Like, those stories are that close-knit because allegedly Spider-Man Homecoming 2 starts, like, a minute after Avengers 4 ends. Like, a literal minute. (laughs) Like, if you were to put those two movies together, you'd just be like, okay, now we're focusing on Spider-Man for two hours. Okay, can I I spit out some blasphemy? (laughs) Go for it. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of Spider-Man. I really don't like him as... Not, not... Not as in Tobey Maguire. Not you in, just mean the character itself. I just mean Spider-Man in and of himself. I don't give a fuck about some teenage boy who got bit by a bullshit-ass radioactive spider who's a fucking or genius. magical spider. Ma- no, we're not getting into that it argument. It is magic, though. I don't care. Either way, it's a shitty character. All right, he's a genius, somehow still stuck in the lower Bronx. Um, living with his Aunt May, who, can we all discuss, like, what fucking time machine that Spider-Man has been in over the movies and the comic books? Well, they're and how all he different got entities. 
Aunt May was like 80, then she was like, I don't know, well, mid 60s. You, you have to think though, like, Marissa Tomei's in her like mid, like early to mid 50s. And so, she looks sexy as fuck. Like, she might look like she's the late 30s, 40 year old aunt, but she's like old enough to go, like, oh, hey, my sister died. I can take care of you. Yeah. It's just one of those things that she happened to have aged extremely well. So people are like, who's this 20 year old bitch playing Peter Parker's aunt? What I'm sorry, fuck? why does Peter Parker look like he's 12 this time? Because he's actually like our age and he feasibly looks like he could be in a high school, unlike Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, who you throw them in a high school, you go, you look like the dude who wouldn't leave because you know the only pussy you could get. I don't know. Is Andrew, Andrew Garfield, I give him at least early college, late high school. I give him senior year of high school, current like current senior year of high school, because for some reason they all of a sudden start aging so fucking fast. Yeah, like he yeah. gets the benefit of the doubt for early, but like Tobey Maguire, he looked. Oh, he was a fucking adult. <laughs> he, he looked, looked like what he did in high school. He looked like what he did in his free time was go to the park and watch children. Let's be honest. All right. <laughs> But overall, <laughs> I don't like Spider-Man. It's just a shitty character. It's been shittily portrayed. And even the comic books, I don't fucking like him. He doesn't fit. All right? You're a fucking Spider-Boy. Crawl up under your rock. Get your aunt out the hood. Stop being a fucking prick. All right? I want to be a superhero. I want to be like Iron Man. I want to be like Captain America. No, you're not. All right? First things first, you don't have the assets that tell that. That Iron Man has in the first place. One, you don't have the sheer raw net worth. Two, you don't have the training that fucking Captain America got. Got bit by a radioactive spider. Now I'm all of a sudden fucking super soldier. Kiss my ass. Which right? is what they are kind of mitigating in the MCU if he doesn't know how to inherently fight. And he still somehow whooped Falcon's ass and the Winter Soldier. I mean, he more fumbled his way through when it came to actual combat, like, he got blindsided. All right, I got into a fight with a Marine. Got my ass whooped. All right, I had a shit ton of tequila before that, but and I wasn't Superman. The only inconsistency it brings up is you can bring up Spidey Sense, but... My ass. Throughout most of Homecoming, well, spoiler alert, there is... Sh like, Spider-Man gets snuck up on Give a lot. Give me a motion sensor film. playing Halo 5. People still assassinate my ass. No, Come like... On. His spider sense is literally something like the moment something is perceived as an even remote threat, his body goes, dodge. Yeah. And there are times in the movie where he's swinging through and he literally gets grabbed out of the sky by stuff. And you're just like, how the fuck? The, the, how the, the fuck? Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 he's a ridiculously shit Yet in Civil War, like, he's dodged some attacks by going like, oh crap, like it was instinct. Yeah. Instinct mid twist. He does have the agility. He has the musculature because of his magical radioactive spider, whatever the fuck it is. But now we're getting into whatever how super actual human got. body physics would work in Spider Man, and we all kind of know if you moved around like that. He had a torqued his spine like the chassis on a Ford F one fifty. Are you I mean, fucking kidding me? As we're going, spiders have an exoskeleton, so they can handle all those X force G forces, and you know. Their bodies are set to move their organs around to account for all that falling. And ours would just be, oh, I'm starting to move at 4, 5, 6, G. Watch my heart go out through my ass. Yes. <laughs> all no. right. It's, it's, no, it's nonsense. I don't like the Spider-Man character. Though, and I hate to say it, I really do. I'm excited for Homecoming. I really am. Have you not seen Homecoming yet? No. Oh, fuck. I've been in Dubai. <laughs> What, they don't got movies in Dubai? I've been busy. You ever <laughs> fucked you with an Arab woman? Good God, that ass is crazy. I'm sorry. Anyway. I can't say that I have. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> the next thing on here, Sony confirmed Anne Hathaway is Barbie. We're, we're going to do a little bit. What the fuck is Barbie? Like the actual like Barbie doll movie? Yeah. Are yes. You okay, first okay. sausage party. First of all, they were going to have Amy Schumer play Barbie. Still not okay. And then they turned her into Anne Hathaway, and the story kind of goes of sort of like Enchanted of she's like the shunned one out of the Barbie world, so she gets thrown into our world. Who the fuck is Ken? Bill Cosby? I have no idea who Ken is. <laughs> no, that's... Like, I mean, it, it's a Barbie movie. They're it, making a Barbie What I'm mad about is not even that who's playing it. I'm mad that they're making it, a Barbie I'm just asking movie. about Anne Hathaway as Barbie. Okay, Anne Hathaway, yeah, she's fantastic. I would love her in a 
like I, I, I can't say I would love her in a Barbie role because I hate the entire idea of this movie. She would fit a Barbie. But what about that chick who actually looks like fucking Barbie? Like the one that spent well, millions of dollars in You also need Christmas. to be able to act. It's fucking Barbie. She's made of plastic. She has a song that says I'm made of plastic. Yes, but... I'll have some boys You at least with want her. critics to go, they didn't... We, we don't want another emoji movie situation on our hands. I didn't see emoji movie. I heard about it. I heard it was awful. Yeah, none of us saw it, which you shouldn't see it, even ironically. Kind of like me maybe go see Sausage Party? Oh, you laughed your ass off. I laughed my ass off and was mad about it. See, at least the <laughs> emoji movie, like, there were fucking kids in the audience of every reviewer I heard, and they're like, was it an R-rated movie? Like, no. Emoji movie was rated like PG, like it was a kids movie. Oh, and I then, thought it was a, someone told me it was an R rated movie, like it was an adult movie, like kind of like no. Sausage Party was. And then, like every critic reviewer was like, "Yeah, there were kids at like the screening with us," and I heard them maybe lightly chuckle twice. Well, okay, at, no, at a kids a movie where it's like, "Hey, look, fart jokes," they did like kid humor, like clearly aiming at kid comedy, and you just get them to go, eh, eh, and. One of the reviews I saw was actually hilarious. Like, the kid next to me just started singing to himself because he was that bored. Okay, let's be honest, though. It's not as simple as easy as it was when we were kids. When we were kids, the fart joke, I mean, shit. Today, a friggin' fart joke sent me over the edge. But I choked on my the beard. The main thing I hear about the emoji movies is, like, I hope Barbie doesn't fall into the pitfall of just, there's a difference between fan service and pandering, and the emoji movie just went, hey, kids like Facebook. Here's Facebook. Kids like Twitter. Let's have Twitter come in and save day. Candy Crush. We're going to spend 10, 15 minutes playing Candy Crush. We have to get to Dropbox. We have to play the Just Dance app, which launched in tandem with the movie. So basically, the Emoji Movie is an advertisement for a whole bunch of social media companies. God damn, that sounds infuriating. You know me. I'd have lost my shit. <laughs> Anyhow, and uh, Sicario 2, I'm excited. Because you know, I really, I never saw the original Sicario. It was really good, but it, you, you need, just, just be warned, it is like a heavy, dark movie. Dude, I hang out with you all fucking day. Yeah, I, I know. I was warning you people out there. Oh. Like, it's more of the heavier tone. So, like, if heavy isn't your shit, I uh, just realized music stopped playing. Uh, don't, like, as good as a movie it is, like, I'd say maybe give it a chance, but if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. I mean, so, like, okay, like, what kind of heavy are you discussing? Like, emotionally heavy. Like, are we talking, like, baby in a dumpster out back of a prom heavy? Or are we talking, like... Like, heavy, gritty, like, this is the life of, say, like... FBI SWAT team raid. Oh, I'm gonna like, fuck, fuck the police. Well, I know you don't. Oh. I know you don't give a fuck about. I mean, some people can't handle like, oh, so they're just gonna go into someone's house, drag because them they've out, never, and they've shoot never them. been in the hood and had somebody, some cop bust in their house, raid their shit, or had drug lords, drug fucking drug runners and gangsters bust in their shit. And, it's, and I understand that I have a different perspective than most people yeah. do. But that being said, it's it's like, it's reality. It's a it really good movie. It's just for most people, it's a little on the heavy side. See, you know how I'd be in that movie, though. I'd probably be sitting there pissed off at things that got worse. They generally got worse than good. Yeah. Nice Bad Boys for Life. What's this? Uh, Bad Boys for Life is no longer on the slate of announced films. Thank God. <clears throat> Uh, Willow, your thoughts on Bad Boys being inexplicably ex- absent from the list? Yeah, I'm not too sure. I didn't know there was a first one. You didn't know there was a first Bad Boys film? You were unaware of the Bad Boys franchise? Uh, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> you just thought the fact that you didn't know what Bad Boys was. <laughs> Where the fuck I, I live you under a rock. Where came from? She, she, she does say she lives under a rock. That rock better be... Who? <laughs> that rock better be pounded into the ground with a goddamn sledgehammer and a half. You fuck you not no bad boys. Woo saw, my nigga. Woo saw. He's black. He's allowed to say it. Fuck. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Moving on, because we spent a lot more time than I thought we would but on But one this. and two is we're okay. We're not doing a third? Was there a third? No, that's, that's, that, that, that would have been the third. Yeah, no, not doing a third. Not okay. Okay, so. <laughs> Moving on to bullshit and cool shit. Jesus Christ. We've been running through a lot of bullshit. Uh, bullshit. Friday is reporting that Anya Taylor Joy, the breakout star of The Witch, which is a horror movie that I have yet to see. Not good. And this past January, Split is in talks to reteam with her witch director, Robert Eggers, for a new take on the cinematic classic Nosferatu. Eggers, that's Eggers. Yeah, whatever. Eggers like, is writing and directing the movie, which will be based on the 1922 silent movie that followed the vampire Count Orlock of Transylvania, who wants to buy a house in Germany and becomes enamored of the real estate agent's wife. That plot was really... Thoughts on them taking the silent film Nosferatu and getting a horror director who's more going like, hey, that reason which probably wasn't a good horror film was it was more atmospheric rather than... Okay, it wasn't a... Okay, Suspense. Okay, let me, let me, let me... It was more... Like, from what I got out of The Witch was, like, it wasn't necessarily like the typical rah jump scare. Da, 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 da. It was no, more it was, atmosphere, psychological. It was suspenseful. Shit. It was more of a suspenseful kind of thing. Which is something I think of. You would kind of need of like have this being who's like shunned from society, like slowly like try to buy a house, fall for a real estate agent. Like you could do co cool shit with that. You could have a very creepy feel. But the witch was more or less one of those. For him, like I know probably Will has better than I have on this one, but my take on it was. That it has uh, this feel of the suspenseful feeling without the satisfying jump scare of Freddy or Jason. You know, the jump out and this is the fin this is the finite previous suspenseful feeling. You stayed on the edge of your chair just because it was and then it started to become upsetting. It wasn't no it was no longer like intriguingly scary. It was just now it's upsettingly irritating. But I uh, love what Willow says. Willow, your thoughts on A this actress joining uh, an Nosferatu movie and B an Nosferatu movie in general. Um, this actress, I will say I did have to look her up, but I am interested to see her in Nosferatu as well as the upcoming um, X-Men and Mutants film she's working on. But Nosferatu being remade does really um, pique me interesting, being the first vampire movie. Yes, and so, cool shit! If the vampire sparkle, I'm... I swear to God, I'm burning down a theater. It's Nosferatu, they're not going to have them sparkle. If the motherfucker sparkles, I'm burning down a theater. Okay. I, I'm with him. Okay, well... You heard it here, Orson. Uh, I don't really know much of this actress as well because I haven't seen The Witch. I've heard decent things, and Split good was good, good, good actress, very good actress. And Split was just Ooh. I heard a Ooh. good movie. Mm. You can mm. have your opinion. You're entitled to it. I mean, I don't really know how to explain my opinion on that. It was a good idea. And it was a spiritual successor to Unbreakable or something. The other channel. I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure about that one, but it was it was a great idea. I just don't quite think they hit it where they needed to. And that is the great thing about film: people can have different views on things. Speaking of different views, or ways people can have different views on things, very quickly, Lionsgate has premiered the first Rememory Remory trailer, however you want to pronounce it, online. Directed by Mark Polanski, the film revolves around the mysterious death of a scientific pioneer who creates a technology that allows you to extract your memories and watch them on an external device. Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, plays a man who shows up and sets out to try to solve, to solve the murder using the memory machine, which allows him to watch the memories from other people as well. As the investigation continues, a web of intrigue and deceit is uncovered. Willow, your thoughts on rememory? Um, all I have notes here for um, after I view the trailer is cool shit in all caps. Um, again, we're hitting the sci-fi territory, and I have seen this sort of um, device technology used before in other sci-fi aspects, and I'm really like to see what they're going to do with it. So, again, cool shit, all caps, because admittedly, like I'm also calling cool shit on well. Cool, calling cool shit on this as well because you know going yeah we need to solve a murder Let, let's use this guy's science device to okay. look at the memories of people and go so where were you last night oh really motherfucker what was the movie with tom hay or tom tom cruise cruise not the old beloved american actor tom hanks tom cruise 
with the precogs and the. Yeah, the, 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 the guy that's laying in the fucking soup that they, that tells them this crime's gonna happen. They can predict like the crimes right before like they happen. To that movie. I, again, I'm gonna agree. Cool shit. Yeah. Been done. Well, yeah, everything's been done before. And Peter yeah, Dinklage. everything. <laughs> fucking love Peter Dinklage. He's so small. It's fucking awesome. Like no, like not even being insensitive towards short people or dwarfs. And. What, we're gonna end with the clickbaity topic, so uh, we're gonna uh, move on to the other topic. So, original Gremlins writer Christopher Columbus has penned the script for Warner Brothers' upcoming Gremlins 3, and says the script will bring the franchise back to its dark and twisted roots. Aaron, your thoughts on Gremlins 3 going back to its more dark and twisted roots? You know how much I love the fucking Gremlins. I'm gonna fangirl out here for a minute. Are you kidding me? This is gonna be the shit because Gremlins 2. God fucking damn, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. It, it was it was trying to be it was trying to be more of a slapstick humor than what the Gremlins were in Gremlins One. What three people died or more in Gremlins One? Off of this was they weren't just these little funny little creatures that ooh they could be dangerous. But let's make them like a slapstick joke from Jim Carrey. No, they were dark. They were twisted, murderous little fucking creatures. Which was fantastic, and the fact that they're bringing in the original writer makes me so goddamn happy. Where are they gonna set it? Was this gonna be done? Can I get a job on set as an actor? Or as an extra? <laughs> Fuck anything. I don't care if I get murked by that goddamn spiky headed gremlin. Any, but I don't care if Gizmo chokes me out. I don't give a shit. I love everything about this idea, and it's gonna be fantastic. Would you care if Gizmo smuggled himself up your ass, and then you could be like Richard Gere for? I would absolutely. I would Richard Gere for a Gizmo. <laughs> you would Richard Gere for a Gremlin. I would shove a Gremlin, or I would shove a. <laughs> I would shove a wa oh, Wagwa or Wig. Oh fucking Christ, um, Mogwai. I would shove a Mogwai up my ass to be part of this fucking movie. All right? <laughs> I would R. Kelly, somebody's daughter, to be part of this movie. This is fantastic. I'm so excited. All right. What's up? Your thoughts? Oh, uh, maybe not as passionate as um, our friend over there, but <laughs> but I'm also calling cool shit. <laughs> We're trying to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty much just gonna echo what Spence said. I'm, I'm really glad that we're um he even openly admitted I I read earlier that um yeah we're counting the second movie didn't happen and we're moving on and we're keeping it dark. Oh, good. And for the clickbaity story, which we're we're I know you're going to immediately go off the handle, so maybe drink a little more of that. Right, oh, I'll just let, we'll let, we'll let sit back here. I'm gonna drink, so please continue. Okay. So, Willow, in a recent interview with Samuel L. Jackson, he revealed that he will not be appearing in Avengers Infinity, Infinity War as well as the untitled Avengers 4. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I told you! Uh, quick, your thoughts? <laughs> okay, well, I'm calling bullshit. Um, from what I was reading, um, he wasn't in Civil War either. But we need at least a glimpse of Fur Fury in background of something. Come on, um, well, yeah, no. Well, he's going to be in Captain Marvel, but I believe that's set more in the '90s. Yeah, I did hear that. So if he's gonna be more of like the tapping character for more of the side characters that are going to be developed in Phase Four, you know, kind of like how he pulled together the Avengers, going like, hey. We need you here, because I need to build another team, because obviously the first one didn't end well. Okay. So, I'm also called bullshit because, come on, man, you have a scene with over 60 fucking characters on screen at the same time for an action sequence, and Nick Fury doesn't even pop up. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. gonna give an extreme level of bullshit here, and I'm gonna rant. So, if you got any more opinions, by all means... But I'm about to rip out some serious Marvel ass. Uh, all right, all right, well, let's do this. You ready for this shit? <laughs> Will, you got any more opinions before I rip out some serious Marvel ass? Matter of fact, give Go me for a dramatic it. undertone for this shit. Do you I'm need about some to inspirational electronica? Or? I'm about to Independence Day speech this shit because I'm so fucking mad right now. I'm seeing red, and that's not just the booze taking over my bloodstream. All right, here you go. We have a little more inspirational track what 
the actual fuck? How the ever-loving hell do you set up Samuel Jackson being Nick Fury? Who Nick Fury, through all of this, through the comic books up until very recently, has been some Italian-looking motherfucker. How do you put Samuel Jackson, the most prominent black actor besides maybe Will Smith and Jamie Foxx? Maybe. I'm saying that if you mention black actor in a movie, someone immediately says Samuel L. Jackson. Who, Samuel L. Jackson, the king of this badass black guy that does not give a shit the hell you say, fit this Nick Fury role so perfectly, then you pull him out for two of the biggest fucking movies you have in your franchise? Infinity Wars, I have been having wet dreams about that since Avengers 1. Are you fucking then Nick Fury? I'm like when they had in Winter when Winter Soldier when Nick, when I thought Nick Fury was dying, I thought they were trying to kill off the Samuel Jackson role. You remember how mad I was? I almost burned your house down. I was so fucking pissed. They finally brought him back. I'm like, okay, we get more Samuel Jackson. I get it. He's somewhat like 50. Niggas don't age. All right, he will be a Samuel Jackson until he's 110. Like Morgan Freeman's been a thousand for how many years? This, this is not an actor that you need to remove from his movies, or if it's a personal thing on his level. Fuck your personal shit, nigga. Stand up for the crew. What the hell? We need you in this movie. He needs to be in this movie because he's just the best actor to fit that Nick Fury role. Kind of like in Iron Man 2 when they replaced, um, after Iron Man 1, Rhodes was, uh... Uh, Terrence Howard for Don Cheadle. Thank you. I, I hate, I've hated the Rhodey role since then. So if, is it that they're, I'm not quite sure if it's that they're not going to have Nick Fury in this movie at all, or if they're going to try to replace him with another brother, and unless it's goddamn Jamie Foxx himself, I will not be pleased with this movie, and it will, and I hate to say it, because I, I love the Marvel Universe, I fangirl for it hard. It's my senpai, it is my waifu, I sleep with a body pillow of Iron Man, alright? It's, I love this friggin, this goddamn series so much. But if they change this Nick Fury role for me, I I cannot watch it. Well, it's not that he's going to be changing the role because between Avengers 3 and 4, he is doing something. He is in the Captain Marvel movie and she is most likely showing up in Avengers 4. So okay. at least in that, you can go from a story perspective. He's not there, but something he put into action to save them all because she's kind of cosmic Superman kind of type lady. I mean, granted, yes, but Captain Marvel was such the, I mean... Like, as far as, like, a reinforcement to you to go, like, okay, since her movie does take place, allegedly, in the 90s-ish to investigate scrolls, which, awesome. Yes, awesome. That Actually, that would be a cool reason for him not to be in there. If, like, she says in passing, you know, setting up, like, some other movie, like, he got captured by scrolls or shit, or he got replaced. Or, yeah, some, something to fill in this gap. I need something... But uh, we're not going to discuss the Captain Marvel role because, granted, it was just an over... Like, okay, understand. I love a strong female character. Because, well, she's not me. I know. I know. But you understand what I'm saying here. I'm saying I love a strong female character. But the whole kicker of it was that even when you read the comics, Captain Marvel was an OP character. She really was the Marvel Superwoman. Well, Superman, Superwoman. Whatever the fuck. But she wasn't this prominent. And the way it's been hyped, and the way I've heard of this coming called Captain Marvel movie, which hasn't even they haven't even announced the release date, have they? Yeah, they have. It's uh, it's the movie after Avengers: Infinity War. So we're looking at like 2020. No, we're looking at 2018, like late 2018, early 2019. I don't know, but either way, either way, this this whole Captain Marvel role has been boosted and hyped so hard because of the current social justice well movement. also just in the comics itself like they did make her more prominent like she she's on the cover of civil war 2 as the head yeah but that's only recent only in recent in the recent well, comic books yeah but. but that's because of this social justice war shit which i love a strong heroine i mean that being said fucking Black Widow any fucking time hell yeah knuckle down with Black Widow fuck that's great Black Widow from, from the tops but this whole we need to have a heroine a, a heroiness I can only about to say well, heroine be the front liner for this in a series that sadly is more dominated by men well yeah and there's no problem with 
her being in the universe. No, I'm the pro- no, oh, no, yeah. whoa, whoa. Not that I'm the problem yeah. with her being in the universe. I just ha- I, I I don't take issue with her or her character or anything about it. I take issue with how it's being sold. Well, it's pandering. Sort it of, really is pandering. They sort of have to because whether Marvel likes it or not, DC actually beat them first at some things. Having a female character? Yes. Having a female-led like title on screen, this is your character. Movie. Are you kidding me? I would love to watch Wonder Woman run around in that skirt and tights more than I'd love to see Iron Man. I love Iron Man. I don't give a fuck about her golden bondage rope. I love it. That is fan fucking tastic. Why she blocks with a wrist cuff? Because goddamn, it'd be a much better movie if she did. <laughs> there is that comic panel of like, why do you block with your wrist cuff? She drops it down, jiggle, jiggle, and then just jiggle, 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 and then all the bad guys start laughing. It's like that's why. <laughs> it'd be a much better movie, R-rated, but a much better fucking movie. <laughs> So, he will be missed, but I see him at least setting her up there, and, you know, she might just go more for her policing role rather than, like, oh, shit, that, uh... How she was the RoboCop of the Marvel Universe? Yes. I mean, because something like... Those who read comics know what I'm talking about when that happens. Yes. The moment something like that happens, which I believe is how Infinity War is going to end, and you're finally going to have all the gems and go. Bam. Yes. She's gonna go, okay, I need to step in. I need to step in there. But she has sat back like fucking Robocop. Well, because she hasn't really. Well, yes, but. Yes. Because she's an OP character. She's OP, and, like, yeah, we're gonna probably get a whole bunch of cosmic deities going on because that was one of the coolest things about that comic book is them yes. all talking of, like, should we allow. Like, they're all things of, like, we're not supposed to intervene, but should we allow him to do this? On that whole planet planetary deity thing I know I'm gonna reach here for a minute I'm gonna really reach really reach him but I was not a big fan I, I, I watched Guardians of the Galaxy 2 you can download watch the bootleg sorry uh, no don't watch the, the official release it's illegal support the official release watch the bootleg no um, d- d- don't be kiss anime and go yo you want your anime for free go here actually subscribe to our patreon for oh dear $5 god dollars a month oh wait how much is a funimation subscription five dollars try to justify your free watching now you're paying a subscription yeah it's bullshit but that being said i just i just watched guardians of the galaxy 2 i think you just watched the avid trailer for going off on a fucking day no i actually i actually watched them on youtube red <laughs> all right well not youtube red i'm gonna no um, you know you could have just watched the video on the Hotel Transylvania next to it. Oh, the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> That's bullshit, man. Was, you were going off that bootleg quality. Story. FBI kicking in the damn door for the bootleg. Man, goddamn, I remember stealing cable with a black box. But anyways, uh, the whole planetary deity thing that the, the what the fuck, I can't remember his name now. Ego? The, pla- the living planet. Yeah, Ego. Yes, Ego, thank you. Could have been better. Well, yeah, he, it could have been better, and Guardians 2, in my opinion, could have been a better film. The whole movie better. overall could have been a much better film. We're not going to discuss Guardians 2, because I'll rant then, too. But the whole thing with with Captain Marvel is for her to actually be like a potent, like for her to be a potent drawing hero for me to be able to get into Captain Marvel requires a just as OP villain. And Well, Thanos would provide that. Yes! Because by that point in the MCU, you would have seen him take on... 60 MCU characters and him go, I'm coming out on the other side of this. That being said, I've also seen Thanos get killed by Deadpool. So, you know... Oh, Deadpool can't fucking die. Yeah, well, so Thanos can suck my... Never mind. Um, I feel like she requires a more planetary cosmic enemy than Thanos. Even Thanos. Well, even in her movie, like, they're giving her the scrolls and one of the best Marvel comic lines is the scroll yeah, invasion. Arc. Yes, I agree. I firmly agree. <laughs> Which, if they're setting up a World War Hulk and B skull invasion, I'm happy. Oh, as absolutely. Fuck. Absolutely. <laughs> four. You'll never see someone cream their pants so quick. That being <laughs> said, I don't think. How long? What do you think the timetable is? Like, we're talking 2025, 28, 28. We're looking years I mean, down the road. We're, we're looking at kids, least 2019. Because, as I said, Homecoming 2. Well, 
Wait, we're already doing already Planet seen... Hulk stuff's happening in Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. So I could see maybe after the events of this is all just speculation here. I could see after the events of the Avengers films, him getting extremely pissed at something. You know, be like the, you know, that is a threat, but I'm still pissed at y'all. You know the. Yo, dude, I'm mad as fuck at you, but that guy's waving a gun in our face right now. So I'm gonna help you kill that guy. I'm not gonna- And then I'm gonna go kick your ass. I'm not even gonna mention how I'm actually irritated about the whole whole Hulk going off and pouting thing. When, uh, after Ultron? Well, was it Ultron? That was the only studio intervention was to make the way he left a little more ambiguous. It was bullshit! Well, they had to make it- <laughs> That, that was the studio note because they weren't sure if, or probably I don't have any basis for this but dude it was let's be square my bucks, speculation though. is they were probably trying to talk with Universal of going hey can we maybe make a Hulk movie without having to throw in another movie and they're going you want to put Hulk on the title it has to go through us okay see again that's another one of those shitty things that I, what I want to do that they're trying to pull over together I love the triple over there. It's really shitty how it's done, how it's going. Well, the effects of what it's been. That being said, that whole Hulk disappearing thing was the cinematographic equivalent of getting a blowjob from a toothless hooker. All right? It sucked. It blew. You finished, but you're not happy about it either way. <laughs> well, that's an image. Yeah, <laughs> think about that one. Like, it was just, it was just, a, it was just really bad. I'm really upset about it. Uh, Hulk better be the fucking man. He better be. I mean, he better be strap, have a comic book strapped to his fucking chest and chains for this fucking Ragnarok movie. Well, from what I'm hearing, it's more. A, it's the. Well, this is actually confirmed. It's the shortest MCU movie. Ugh. Shortest. B, it's more of a. Let, let, let me finish. finish. It's more of a comedy, but more of like a... Oh, please finish now. Please, before I lose my shit. But more in like the way of a comedy comes about from like Thor, Hulk, escaping prison, buddy cop type movie. So the Pulp Fiction of a fucking... So think, yeah, Pulp Fiction has a lot of violence and murder. So, so yeah, maybe this will be Thor Pulp Fiction just... They are going to fuck this. <laughs> oh movie. my god. From what I see in the trailers, it looks like goddamn Hulk. Hulk and Ragnarok in Power Rangers. This is going to suck ass. <laughs> I am. Reserve judgment until you see the movie. Reserve judgment. Gonna... Gonna... If it gets hyped up like Ultron did, which I was supremely, supremely disappointed in Ultron, I'm going to sit here with my low expectations and my slight amount of hatred because I'm expecting it to suck massive jungle pages good because then if the movie's even average you'll be like all right exactly i'll be hyped up so right now i'm gonna keep my opinions down keep my opinions upset angry which is what i do best and drunk yes <laughs> if you can't tell he's been drinking so willow thank you for being yes. out here do you have any more closing thoughts on this or you uh, just, uh, 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 in awe of this Rant, he just dropped on us. I told you it was gonna happen, I warned you. I gave you the music. <laughs> okay, you gave me the music. I'm, I'm actually really happy with the music. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Follow me on Facebook. No, I... That sucked my dick. <laughs> I don't think that's an actual thing. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter for bitches. <laughs> okay, so Willow, back to you. <laughs> no, I think that about sums everything up for us for right now. Yeah. Uh, any places they can find you? Thank you, computer, for making this out. Anywhere people can find you if they want to. I'm on Twitter and everywhere else at Willow Red Raven. All right, I'm that guy from Team Beatendorf. I'm pretty sure you can find me. You're 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 watching the video. I believe in you. I really hope you can, but you know what? You people have disappointed me before. And I'm Aaron. You can find me at Aaron T. Pitcher on Facebook. I'll be popping in on Team Beatendorf's page once in a while too. So, alrighty. Thank you all for coming out. Bye! Bye.